Now let's talk about the polymer Teflon. What is it? What do we use it for? Teflon is amazing! You probably have some Teflon in your house. Teflon cutting boards, for example. We use it for all sorts of stuff. Maybe you've got a Teflon lined pan, right? These non-stick pans where you can fry your egg right on there and it slides right off onto your plate. They're amazing. So what is Teflon? Why does it have these amazing properties? Teflon is shown right here. That's the Mer repeat unit. What does it look like? It looks a lot like polyethylene, right? Polyethylene, these side groups right here, which are now shown as F, those were all hydrogens in polyethylene. If you replace the hydrogen with a fluorine molecule, you end up with Teflon, or polytetrofluoroethylene. Sometimes we call it PTFE, polytetrofluoroethylene, right? Now, fluorine carbon, that's a really strong bond. The fluorine really wants those electrons, so it's going to hang onto it really tightly, right? These bonds are incredibly strong. Because that fluorine wants to grab the, the electron from carbon so strongly, it's very unlikely that in, if you expose it to something else, that it's going to break that bond. For that reason, these are very chemically inert. They don't interact with much anything. They're very hard to dissolve. They're really great if you want a protective surface, right? They are also hydrophobic. If I put water on the surface of these, uh, you'll notice that they do not wet very easily, right? They beat up. It does not wet very easily, right? And that's desirable for a lot of applications, right? Uh, they have the third lowest coefficient of friction of any solid, which means you can do things like this, put a gecko on it, and a gecko can stick to anything, but it can't stick to Teflon. Here's a gecko trying to climb out of a, a Teflon pan. Can't do it, buddy. It's not happening, right? So some really interesting properties out of this. Um, People actually line ant farms with this at the top, too, to make sure that the ants can't climb out because they can't stick to it either. Um, it's very chemically inert. It's really great. Um, it is susceptible to creep, right? If you squeeze on it, we talked about creep in a previous chapter. If you squeeze on it or if you pull on it, it will slowly deform over time, and it is somewhat susceptible to that, right? Um, which is why sometimes when people make PTFE gaskets, they're not ideal, and in many cases, rubber makes a better gasket because it's not as susceptible to creep. Another downside of PTFE is that it has a very high melting point. That can be an advantage, right? Because oftentimes we want to use polymers, but they melt, and so we can't use them. Teflon does not melt at low temperatures, so you can use these at high temperatures, but they can also run into problems. Before they melt, they actually decompose. This was actually a problem in the cooking pan business, right? People would accidentally leave this on the stove. It would get really hot, and instead of the polymer, the Teflon co coating melting, it actually decomposes into harmful fluorocarbon gases, right? So you have to make very sure that you don't let it get too hot. This is why you would never cook with safflower or avocado oil in a Teflon lined pan, because those don't start smoking until above the temperature when you get decomposition into these harmful fluorocarbon gases. Another challenge is that even when you do melt it, you get really high melt viscosity. It's sort of like a gel. It doesn't flow very nicely. So most polymers, you're able to melt them. They flow really easily in this molten state, and you're able to do things like injection molding. So you can produce really complicated shapes, like bottles like this. You can injection mold them or blow mold them into shapes. You can't do that with Teflon very easily. So instead, what they often do is something called cold molding, where you basically take a bunch of the Teflon powder, you pack it into some sort of shape, you squeeze on it, and then you heat it up, causing these particles to stick to one another. That process is called sintering, by the way. When you make particles, you heat them up until they bond together. It's called sintering, right? Um, so Teflon's tricky. It's tricky to process. There's actually a company that's local to, uh, to Salt Lake City that makes really cool things out of Teflon. They'll line giant vessels. They're able to put Teflon down with spray coating, right? So they can do um, powder coating of Teflon. They can do really thick layers. This is actually Kynar. It's a, it's a relative to Teflon. Instead of Kynar is PVDF. How it's different is that instead of fluorine on all sides, you have fluorine on half the sides and hydrogen on the other sides. It, it behaves similar to Teflon in many ways. Anyways, uh, the things to take away about Teflon is that it is extremely useful because it is low coefficient. It is non won't interact with much. It's chemically inert, but it's hard to process. It does have some challenges, and it's a really unique, important polymer that we use all the time. Now, how was it discovered? Check this out. Roy Plunkett, he's at DuPont. They had this cylinder that had some sort of hydrocarbon gas in it, and um, it actually polymerized inside the cylinder. They weighed it, and the weight of the cylinder said, this is still full of material, 
but when they turned the valve, nothing was coming out. So they actually unscrewed the thing, which would be dangerous. Any sort of pressurized cylinder, you would never just unscrew the top off of it. And then they noticed that some white powder came out. So then they sawed this thing open, which again would be crazy to take a highly pressurized cylinder and saw it open. But they figured that there was no gas inside of it. So they sawed it open. Sure enough, here's the picture. You can see that on the inside of this vessel, it was lined with this white powder. And Teflon had formed along the inside of there. And DuPont didn't realize it at the time, but they had just cashed in on a huge commercial product. Uh, and thus was born the, the trade name Teflon, which now has... A million and one applications, uh, very, very cool material. So that's Teflon.